Today, of course, it was NBC's inestimable Pete Williams who first broke the news that Justice Stephen Breyer was retiring. Um, I was glued to that coverage as, Steve, uh, as, as Pete broke that, that news on our air here on MSNBC. Um, and then after Pete had concluded his reporting, I cheated on my MSNBC family because I immediately wanted to jump over to NPR to find what Nina Totenberg's reporting would be on the announcement, knowing that with her experience as a Supreme Court, uh, reporter and with her deep connections to so many of the justices and those around them on the court, she would have detail and insight that nobody else had as to where this decision came from and what it will mean for the court. And indeed, uh, all day long, her reporting for NPR has been priceless. There's just a, just a piece of it today. Quote, if he hadn't been a justice, Hollywood might have made him up. Deeply intellectual, fluent in not just law, but also philosophy, art, and culture. He's also absent-minded, geeky, self-deprecatingly funny, physically fit, but so preoccupied that he three times suffered serious injuries when knocked from his bicycle. In 1993, Mr. Breyer was a finalist to fill a Supreme Court vacancy. He was about to come to Washington for an interview with then-President Bill Clinton when he was knocked off his bike by a car. With broken ribs and a punctured lung, he took the long train ride to Washington for the meeting. He was in considerable pain at the time, and the word was the interview did not go particularly well. Clinton chose Ruth Bader Ginsburg instead. But a year later, when a second vacancy occurred upon the retirement of Justice Harry Blackman, it was Stephen Breyer who got the nod. Nina Totenberg also said today, quote, in many respects, Breyer's monuments were not so much the decisions that he authored as the decisions that he influenced. Behind the scenes, Justice Breyer pushed and prodded his fellow justices for consensus on everything from Obamacare to affirmative action in higher education. Joining us now is Nina Totenberg, legal affairs correspondent for NPR uh, and national treasure. Uh, Ms. Totenberg, it is great to have you with us tonight. Thanks for making time. <laughs> Uh, it's lovely to be here, Rachel, after a long day for those of us who cover the court. Um, I did want to say one thing to you about Ronald Reagan and Joe Biden. These are mm. two men who have some things in common. They don't generally make promises that they don't believe in. And Reagan actually believed in the idea of naming the woman to the court. And when he, just before he named O'Connor, a bunch of his young Turk aides tried to talk him out of it. And they said, you should name Bork or Scalia, uh, somebody like that first, not, not use your first. And you know, you don't know how many more of these are going to be nomination to this woman that we don't know that much about. And he said, I like her. I spent, you know, she's a Westerner. I like her ethic. I like the way she is. And I'm going to name her. I made a pledge and I'm going to live by. It. In terms of this decision today um, from, from President Biden, uh, as you can tell from the start of the show, there's so much emphasis, and there always is, on who the president will pick for, uh, for the, what, what, else, what will soon be the open seat. Um, but I wondered if you could talk a little bit about how the court will change with the loss of Justice Breyer. I thought you're reporting today at NPR about his, not only his pragmatism, but his behind the scenes effects on other rulings, on, on, the, on his fellow justices. That seems like that's something that's pretty hard to, to shop for in another nominee because you don't know how these justices will work together, but it also just seems like a rare quality. It's a very rare quality, but it stems in part from his really strong beliefs that the trust that the American people have in the Supreme Court is based on some idea of consensus and not having radical changes suddenly that make it look like it's just a political decision dressed up in a black robe. I, and I think he's been, I think last year he had a good term. He managed to get some of that consensus about some things. This year, it's something else. And you literally could see him like this sometimes during oral argument. Um, he sees the court is going very dramatically to the right, um, potentially overturning Roe versus Wade, now headed possibly in the direction of overruling um, the idea that, you, that uh, colleges and universities can use race as a factor, one of many factors in, uh, in college admissions, affirmative action. Uh, you see it in the 
desire to move very quickly and the notion of gun rights. And I think he's not a fool. He's 83 years old. He has a lot of experience. And I think he ultimately looked around and said, I can only do this for so much longer. The Democrats could lose control of the Senate and in, in the next election. And if that were to happen, you know, Mitch McConnell might hold up the next opening for two years. So I better do it now. Hmm. Often, Supreme Court, not always, but often, retirements, departures from the courts are announced at the close of the court's term. So that would be usually typically in, in, in June. Um, Justice mm -hmm. Breyer actually did do a political favor to the White House by announcing that he would retire in June, but making the announcement now so they could start to work on his successor. I wonder if that means that um, the White House was sort of right in terms of how they tried to temper so many calls from the left and from commentators and gadflies and progressive groups really trying to push Justice Breyer to to retire, um, thinking that that might harden his resolve to stay. I, I wonder what your view is of, of his decision on, on the timing and the, the sort of courtesy to the White House, the political courtesy of giving them a few months more than they might have otherwise had. Well, I, I think, I think um, Ron McClain, the White House chief of staff, posted some pictures on Twitter today of him with a um, an envelope, which was Byron White's, Justice Byron White's retirement letter. Plain had clerked for him, and he called him over. At the time, he, Plain was working in the Clinton White House. He called him over, and he said, here, I want you to take this to the president. And I think that was in February, because I think I had the misfortune to be away. Um, and it, it, it's, a, it's a favor that justices have done, not always, but in the last 20 years or so, from time to time, not always, but when they've made a decision, when they actually have made a decision, when they're not on the fence. Justice Kennedy, I think, was really on the fence in 2018 until he finally pulled the trigger on it. But I think Justice Breyer had finally made up his mind, and I expected that if he were going to do this, he would do it in January or February or the latest early March and give the White House time to completely vet the candidate, get the candidate confirmed, understanding that there aren't that many rules left, if any, that Republicans can use to block a Democratic nomination right now. Uh, as long as it's a 50-50 Senate and Kamala Harris is the vice president, you can break the tie. I think that the Democrats would stick together, barring some unforeseen revelations that would make it more difficult for some of them, in which case they pull the plug and pick somebody else. Nina Totenberg, legal affairs correspondent for NPR, uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. I'm going to insist anytime there's Supreme Court news this big that you keep that garden background just for, so we can <laughs> signal the people. Get rid of it. No, no, it's perfect. And it'll be it'll be our visual cue to the world that something big has happened. Even, even if we say Rachel, that. it's so called and truth telling that I am. I'm a technical idiot. So I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> well, I, you can't. You're not allowed. So it's it's no okay. permanent. Now I'm not allowed. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. Thank Bye. you, Nina. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.